My name is Hugo Bernier. I'm the world's laziest developer. And uh, you know what we what we've started to do is a series of sessions around design patterns around SharePoint framework. And the ultimate goal is at the end of the season, right? We'll actually have kind of uh, established some best uh, design patterns, both in terms of user experience and coding. But we're also hoping to start uh, going towards, you know, uh, creating ACE cards as well and make that transition easy for everyone. Last time we spoke, we covered uh, performance on asynchronous rendering. That was a bit of a of a heavier. Uh, session. This session is going to be a bit lighter. We're going to talk about uh, property panes. So I'm sure everyone knows what a property pane is, but again, these sessions are about making sure that everyone has the same level of knowledge. So the property pane are those things in a web part when you click on the edit properties or edit web part, it pops up this, this property pane that shows the web part name and then gives you some options, right? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's very cool, but let's talk about the proper way of using these property panes. And one of the things that we should probably start by pointing out is the, the property pane itself, when you start a web part, is designed to be 320 pixels wide. And that's not a random number that like Vesa picked because he liked that number. It's actually because 320 pixels wide is exactly the the ideal resolution uh, or dimension to actually have on a mobile device. So your web part property pane will actually take over the entire uh, mobile device screen if you if you enter in edit mode, and it's going to render pretty awesome. Of course, if you have a cool Surface Duo like I do, then it's it's you know it's irrelevant. But uh, let's go back to uh, the properties property pane. Let's talk about the first type of property pane, which is the single pane. So let me switch to my other uh, desktop. There you go. All right. So if you can see my screen now, uh, I have a whole bunch of web parts on the screen. And let's talk about some of these web parts. Uh, the first one is kind of the image web part, the out-of-the-box image web part, right? And the out-of-the-box image web part, one thing that you'll notice is if you just drop it in, it gives you a nice placeholder and it says, hey, you need to pick a web part, uh, an image. And if you don't have an image selected, uh, you kind of get the first stage property pane, which says, hey, you need to select something, right? Once you pick an actual image, uh, we'll just pick uh, stock photography here. There we go. I'm suddenly hungry. It actually gives you uh, a, a different property pane, a second stage property pane, which actually asks you to configure this. So if you want to add text and things like that. Um, so that's one thing to understand is these property panes can actually be reactive and understand what's going on and react accordingly to that. You got some web parts that are super easy to configure, like the file viewer, right? The one thing they'll say, it'll give you uh, here instructions at the top of the screen, uh, the top of the property pane to say, this is what I'm expecting you to do. And then it makes it super easy for you to configure. And that's actually a good pattern to follow is tell your users what you're expecting. Uh, you know, don't just drop them in in the middle of, of something and just, you know, expect them to know exactly what they're supposed to do. Uh, the uh, the text web part has kind of some advanced property pane here. The window said it doesn't really tell you what you're expected to do. It just shows you for, for some formatting options and things like that. We'll come back to that because that's actually another cool design pattern that we can talk about. And the stream video, uh, I've noticed it's, oh, I always have to click a few times before I get it. Stream video again gives you some nice instructions at the top. This is what we're expected to do because it might not be as intuitive uh, for people how to use the stream video. Uh, and then it gives you some options, right? So the sing single property pane is actually very easy to, to do. Um, by the way, all these uh, sample web parts that I've created uh, are going to be made available in the uh, SPFX repository, in case you're wondering. Uh, so the single pane web part here, um, again, I just created a simple description. And I know I have my gigantic mouse gets in the way here, but I got a description and then I've just got kind of a simple label. And that's what I'm going to show you the code for. But you'll notice that I have another flavor here, which is just no description uh, with just a simple text. And we'll show you how to do that right now. Cool. 
Um, so let's talk about uh, some of the code that we're doing, right? So the first thing that you do when you have a property pane in your web part is you kind of need to uh, define a method called get property pane configuration. When people click on that button to edit the web part, this function will get called. And what the function is supposed to do is it's supposed to return a I property pane configuration. And so really what we're doing is we're just doing a return here of stuff. Pro I property pane configuration has a bunch of pages. Now in a single property pane, you'll actually have uh, one page, uh, but that page can actually have a few things. One of the things is the header, right? So the, the header is basically that text, that, that helpful text at the top that tells you what to do. And then it'll also give you the option to give some uh, some groups. So you have some groups. You return some groups, and uh, those groups, what I've done for the sample is I've actually returned a series of group fields. In this case, I'm only returning a single field, and that's what you saw where it says, this is the field label. Uh, please enter some text, right? That's kind of simple, um, but let's look at what we got out of that, right? So there was a single pane web part with a description, a field label, and the text. But if I wanted to have no description, you know, I know it's going to sound like a, a really weird concept, but all you need to do is to hide the description by just not providing it or passing a null value. Uh, why am I saying this is, as you'll see, as we explore some of the out of the box web parts, uh, and their property panes. Some of them are actually using kind of weird variations of, of this. And, uh, you know, some of you may have uh, kind of navigated uh, through a lot of documentation to try to figure out how to make these configurations. All right. Now let's talk about what if I have a web part like this, right? That has, and this is actually an out of the box web part that I've rewritten. Um, to show highlighted content, but look at all the options that are available on this web part. Lots of options. And there's got to be a better way to do this. Well, thankfully, there's a law, right? The law is called Hick Hyman Law. Uh, those may or may not be the actual people that, uh, uh, but they're, they're basically uh, a, Brit a British psychologist. Uh, his name is William Edmund Hick and Ray Hyman. And in 1952, they already knew how to write web parts. And what they did is actually they found a relationship between the number of stimuli or choices that were available and a person's reaction time given that, that, that stimulus. So specifically what they found is the more choices I have to choose from, the longer it takes uh, for me to make a decision. And so when you bombard your users with too many choices, they have to take the time to interpret all those options and you're giving them work that they don't want. Um, I like to call that, if you live in the United States, uh, you know, I, um, I like to call that the Cheesecake Factory law because the Cheesecake Factory is a restaurant that has a menu that's probably 72 pages long and it makes it, it takes forever for you to make a choice because everything looks good and you want to order everything. So let's talk about a new type of uh, web part, property pane, that is called the accordion web part. And with the accordion web part, what you can do is you can actually just create the same web part, but you can create sections here. And these sections are designed to actually make the choices a lot easier. Uh, and yes, I like uh, Louise calls it uh, choice paralysis. So now the question is, well, how many, how many categories do I create? How many choices within each category? Is there a rule? Well, it turns out there is another law, right? Miller's law. And again, this may or may not be the right picture for uh, George Miller. I just Googled it. Uh, but George Miller in uh, 1956, he came up with, uh, again, he was really cool. He was writing web parts back then. But he figured out that the number of objects that a person in average can hold in their mind, in their working memory, is about seven. Uh, and it's often been called as the magical number of seven plus or minus two. Now, a lot of people actually say uh, he meant it as a joke and it's not really the number, but it's actually a good rule of thumb. So in average, if you have seven choices, what will happen is most people will be able to deal with all those choices, 
But there's going to be a few people that are not going to be able to make sense of the last two choices. They just won't remember those last two choices that are available. I can, of course, they'll read it, but they'll have to work harder to know that those choices are there. So giving you a list of like, you know, 17 fields on one on one property pane is not going to cut it for you. You can go as high as nine, but keep in mind again that some people are not going to be able to see all the options. And you can go as low as five choices. And that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's just kind of a best practice in terms of how to render your your information to make sure that people can see. So if you look at the two property panes side by side here, you'll see that it's really easy to configure the one on the right because we made the choices easy. Does it have to do with content? Does it have to do with filtering and sorting or how I'm going to lay out the information? So how do I do that? Well, the only thing that I really need to do is it, when I'm defining my property pane, I say display groups as accordion equals true. And then instead of having a single group like I had before, I can add uh, more than one group. And then in that group, I can actually say whether I want that group to be collapsed from the start or expanded. And so see here, I have one group, I have another group, and I have a third group. I like to start them as collapsed, uh, but you don't have to. Now, one thing that we have to make clear, though, if you give choices to people, just remember that those choices should make sense. Don't put cryptic choices behind property panes that are collapsed, because people are not going to know, uh, you know, how to make sense and how to pick the which one's the right door. Right? It's going to be more a game of uh, whack-a-mole. Uh, yes, display group as an accordion is an out-of-box parameter unless I misspelled it right. Okay, so really quickly, because we're trying to cover a lot uh, today, um, we also have another type of property pane, which is steps. And the steps property panes are kind of a specific thing, because one thing that we want to do is we always want to avoid the types of things where, you know, I have options in one group and they're related to another option in another group, and then if you, put the wrong value in one group, then we're telling you, oh, you know, this other group has an issue with the choice you made and stuff like that. It just becomes a nightmare from a user experience perspective. So you can actually use steps, right? Where you can say, hey, you know, uh, we're gonna start with step one, where we're gonna pick, I don't know, we're gonna pick a data source. Step two, we're gonna do this. Step three, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna make these choices based on, on what you've done. So this is where you can guide your users through it. To make, I'll skip the demo for the, the steps here, but I'm going to show you uh, the one thing that you do again is we continue using, uh, you know, before we had groups, but we defined only one page that we return. In this case, we're actually going to return a whole bunch of pages. This is going to be the first page that's going to have a couple groups. We're going to have a second page that's going to have a whole bunch of other groups. And then we're going to have the third page. And the great thing about that is when you're using pages, again, it will render this in a nice flow through wizard that you're able to guide your users through. Now, the question is, when should I use a property pane? Because, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, people that will actually use property panes, sometimes where it's not ideally uh, the best choice. And one of the things that we want to consider is the concept of a user experience of directness. So the more users can directly interact with something, the better it is for them. And here's an example. We're going to go to the web parts again. And we're going to look at the uh, text web part right there, text web part. Imagine if I wanted to actually enter text here, and the only way that I could do it would be through the, the property pane, right? It would be kind of unnatural for me to actually go in here to edit the text. I want to be able to type the text here. And I want to be able to, if I have advanced functions, then I want to be able to go to the property pane and make those changes. So wherever possible, you want to make sure that the, the stuff that people will edit will be as direct as possible. Here's another example here, the site's web part, right? We have a title for the web part. A lot of people like to put the title in the property pane, but if you can, just do it here, right? These are the cool things, right? that I want to show, right? Whatever, I can't spell today. Um, 
that's the most natural experience. Don't force people to go to property pain, uh, because especially in a property pain like this, where you have a lot more choices to offer, it might just overwhelm the user. All right, I got one more minute, so we're gonna skip some stuff today, but let's talk about what we wanna do next. I don't know if you're old enough to remember these choose your own adventure books, but uh, we've decided to start leaving it up to the audience to vote on what they want to talk about next. Choose your own SPFX adventure. There's three choices. We want to talk at our next session about how to handle custom properties, including saving things, but also making properties that can be searched uh, by SharePoint, uh, how to extend property panes, and how to improve performance. Now, don't worry, we're going to cover every one of those. We've got lots of content to, to cover these. But what we want to know is which one do you, would you like to see next? Which one's the most urgent for you? So we have a form that's available here. I think uh, David's going to be pasted the link. He's already done it. And we have a QR code because we are cool like that. Uh, so we're going to open the poll for the next week until next Thursday's Community Call. And then we'll be presenting what people voted for. That's it for me. Thank you. Back to you, Patrick. All right. Thank you, Hugo.